Hi, beautiful people. Welcome to yet another day of our absolutely amazing summit called Conscious Togetherness, a love affair. This love affair refers to humanity and the life itself. So during this summit, we are talking about um, ideas, um, suggestions, teachings, how to approach living and how to make life a better place to be. And what is the best teaching about life? Then, of course, talking about life. So that's what we are going to do today with a wonderful colleague of mine, Swanet Kunze. Welcome, Swanet. Very nice to have you here. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate to be your guest today. Thank you very much. I am so happy to know all about it. So tell me all, how did you get to the place where you are at the moment? You know, in life and your journey. Yeah, this, this has been really a journey. If you, you look into my life, um, it looks like there were different kinds of stages for me to do grow and to understand more about life, life by itself. So uh, looking a little bit in, in my uh, having my background, um, I started my education in medicine. I worked in clinical microbiology for some years. And uh, then I studied chemical environmental technology. So I'm an engineer and worked in an agency um, where we uh, analyzed um, toxic substances in houses uh, and how they impact the health of people. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, and then somehow I, I came into a business consultancy for personal development and uh, organizational transformation and worked as a, as a consultant and also uh, I'm a certified business coach and made my career in, in, in project management, in facilitating of um, companies, uh, in cultural change inside of the company. And I had then a little time to also work with animals in animal assisted therapy, not only for children with reading disabilities and uh, social problems, but also in leadership trainings. We used horses to teach the leaders of companies in communication, in how to respect uh, and, and uh, other people. What is a concept about leadership? So this was really an interesting time as well. And then I had my own little company uh, business consultancy um, where we did coaching and mediation. So people getting mm, yeah, a better um, way of living together in, inside of, of a company. and. So this was like, I, I, from my point of view and also from the point of view of other people, this looked like having a very good career and yeah, also a good income, good life, lifestyle. And at one point I felt, you no, know, I'm running out of my own energy, even though I am trained in so many different things like being a business coach, being trained in stress management and all this kind of stuff. I didn't walk my own talk. And yeah, I had this moment where I really felt, okay, I, I need to change something because if I will go on with this kind of lifestyle, being on the road the whole week, like you know, beginning uh, of the week, I had my suitcases, I had my project maps and my tickets. And it was like, okay, today I'm here, tomorrow I'm there, not really having any more free time for myself. I was kind of feeling, okay, if I go on like that, I will burn out soon. Mm. So what, what I did was I looked on this wheel of life. You can imagine we have different kind of um, parts we need to um, yeah, think about, like what is my health? What is also my, my income? What is my business? What is my personal growth of spirituality? spirituality? What are my hobbies? Do I even have time for my hobbies? What are my relationship to my family, to my friends? All these kind of aspects need to be considered if you want to have a good life. Yeah. yeah? 
and looking into my wheel of life, like if the zero is not happening at all, the 10 is like it is really the best you can have. I was good with my business. This was really like an eight, for example. But looking at my health, this was down at a three, perhaps. Yeah, not making any more, more sports, um, eating junk food um, uh, between two meetings. So I really felt like I was, yeah, I'm not concentrating on my health anymore. Also like my hobbies, I worked so much that all my hobbies like dancing, for example, um, didn't happen anymore. And this is really what I also would like to, to ask the audience. If you look into your own life and consider all these different parts you need to have in your life to, to be happy and to have a fulfilling life, where are you at? a five or above or where you are, are you perhaps even less? I think this is a good tool to understand where you have to concentrate on to at least get on a five. If it is more like if it is a 10, then wow. No? <laughs> but often we forget mm -hmm. about different aspects if we only concentrate on one thing like I did, uh, concentrating on business. Well, it is very interesting what you are saying because um, I found it very difficult to uh, focus on my business and live my life at the same time, you know. And that is why I have never been a business conscious person because I wanted to live. I always made my living and I am very happy with that. And I have always been very happy with that. But somehow I needed far more than that from life. and. I didn't want to give up, but now the pandemic is on us, you know, and I cannot travel. I'm, I've been all over the world, really billions of countries, and I lived in different continents. So the idea is really that I wanted to carry on doing that, but the pandemic put me down here in front of my computer, and now I can focus on my business a bit, you know. <laughs> okay. So probably that is what you are talking about. And also, of course, we forget about our dreams or our hobbies. And after a while, we don't even want to have them any longer. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. so uh, of course, um, hobbies change. Yes. So um, I will not do ballet anymore as I did as a child. But uh, the, the passion about dancing is still there. So understanding what are you passionate about, what re really brings you forward or drives you. And this can be work as well. Otherwise we wouldn't do and create the things we are creating here at the moment. Uh, but it can also be uh, that it is um, having a nice relationship uh, with uh, friends and um, uh, yeah, going out dancing, for example. So what brings happiness in your life? What, what brings fulfillment in your life? And I really think that you have to focus on the different aspects. If you only focus on one, like only on work, then you become a workaholic and your relationship with friends will break down. Your hobbies will be reduced or even not happen. So um, as you said, now in the situation of, of uh, COVID, yes, we all have this... Uh, problem that uh, we can't travel a lot or that we can't uh, meet uh, people or big groups, even though I'm now living for three and a half years in Madeira, originally coming from Germany, um, and we don't have this massive problems here. So my life here didn't really change so much as uh, having options uh, to go out or to go to the ocean or to have walks in nature or to meet people. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yes, it is very exciting. Um, and also, you see, people want to focus on work, I think, because there is a des desperation of uh, having the security. We see money as the ultimate security in our lives, because our lives, we have to be honest, is not very secure. I mean, we really have to live from one day to another one. And um, it, it takes a toll on, on people's nerves and health, of course, because you have to understand that and have to bear the consequences also. 
So how do you find the balance um, in your life when you can actually uh, follow your own uh, ideas and joys uh, and also do the business and of course find the stability what you need for living? Yeah, so it really was this changing point when I first came here to Madeira. Madeira is a tiny island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean belonging to Portugal for all the people that don't know Madeira. So <laughs> it is also known as uh, the island of the flowers. So really an island of abundance of plants. And it was this moment when I decided, okay, I need a little bit of time out and I gave myself um, one week of holidays going to Madeira and um, stepped out of the, of the plane and I was really flashed. It was, how can I say, love on first sight, the energy here, the blue sky, the abundance of, of all this, these flowers. And, and uh, I, now when I look out, I'm, I'm seeing banana trees, I'm seeing orange trees and I see the ocean. Yeah, this is for me quality of life. And I was really, I'm stepping out of this plane and I was really in this energy of, wow, what an island. And I had the time to uh, walk a little bit around in nature. And I was so deeply connected from one moment to another that I had the feeling I, I would like to live here. And I came back again and again, and then I decided I will not buy a ticket back to fly back. So, <laughs> um, at that time, um, yeah, I had my company, uh, I had horses, I had uh, you know, kind of, of uh, different things I uh, wanted not to, to bring here. So I closed my company, I sold my horses, I sold my house, I sold my car, everything, just you know, packed some um, boxes for storage area. And then I took my three cats, my computer and a suitcase of clothes, to go here. So this was a moment of total insecurity. What you just told, we don't have a secure world, but for me, it was really everything that I had stopped. Yeah. And I went to a uh, place that I never lived really before, where I not really had friends. I don't had, uh, didn't had uh, a company here. Uh, I even didn't have a house here. So it was really zero reset. Yeah. And um, for me, this means this was the ending, but it was also the new beginning for me. Okay, what do I really want to create in my lifetime? Because all that I did was, was fine for the time that, where I was in this kind of business. But I somehow also lost my connection to, to my own nature, to what I feel is, is kind of my sole purpose. Um, and now after giving myself a little bit of a sabbatical to really become clear on what I want to create in this world, I'm back into business, but the business is different. It means for me, I'm creating um, a world for um, a better humanity in connection with Gaia, with all the living. And these are different kinds of projects I'm managing at the moment. And again, I feel that I will make an impact not only for like the people that are here, but really for, for the universe, if you want to call it that way. Yeah. Yes, of course, everything is interrelated. So if we make ourselves uh, better or we make uh, a better place for ourselves, obviously we are adding to the universe. So it is very exciting. Um, so tell me all what you are doing at the moment. Yeah, I have a project. It is called Healing Holidays Madeira. Wow. And um, these, uh, the idea behind is that um, we, we use, of course, the nature of this beautiful island. But also Madeira has a history uh, being uh, an island of uh, the healings. So uh, in former times, the rich and famous came here if they had problems with their lungs. So like Prince, Princess uh, Sissi, for example, she was here for, for curing herself. 
Yeah. So this kind of tradition I want to bring back to the island as we have the nature and the healing concept um, for people that need uh, an holistic approach on their healing, which means that, for example, the conventional medicine uh, didn't work. They have chronic pain, they have mental issues. Um, also, they feel like they're in this moment of awakening and don't know what is going on as they feel now more things. Perhaps they, they are, also have clear senses. They don't know how to work with them. So these healing holidays will be um, retreats here in Madeira um, for people, for uh, body, mind and soul. Oh, it's exciting. So are you going to take on groups, special groups of people or going to do one-to-one -one or um, giving them some um, courses or lectures? Or yeah, so this will be um, retreats for small groups, like uh, eight to 12 people because Healing is a very intense um, and personal in individual thing. So we, we will not have very huge groups, but small groups. And also we uh, work one on one uh, in our uh, VIP retreats. So this is like people can come here, have, for example, two uh, weeks of uh, intense transformation. And we have de different therapists that work together with me. Um, concentrating on body, mind, and soul so that we have this holistic approach uh, to really bring people back into their health and uh, also to empower them to uh, go on with their life when they're back home. Um, and you are the coordinator of all that. I'm the coordinator of that, yes. Excellent, excellent. Now, I am wondering about, because we talk, we talk about the holistic approach to body, mind, and spirit and whatever it is. Um, Everybody means something different by it, you know. I mean, for me, body, mind, and spirit might not really be so much a holistic approach because that's the approach, you know. We have body, mind, and spirit. Uh, in the whole lot is the holistic part is the soul, obviously, because we don't usually treat our soul because we don't know much about our soul. And we don't understand our soul very much. So how do you actually uh, make people aware of their own issues? Because obviously, if they need a retreat, they have some kind of issues to overcome. So how do you make them find uh, the problems, what uh, ails them or what? holds them back. Yeah, often um, we start with symptoms. So people tell me what kind of symptoms they do have. And for me, I have to look, okay, how are these symptoms connected to the source of the problem? And often it is not like, even if they have problems in their house, it could be like that the, the source of the problem is in their mind, in their mindset. Yeah. Or even it can be, if, if you believe in that, uh, it can be that it comes from past lives. So sometimes seeing where is, is the connection. And I can, can give you an, an example uh, for uh, um, a client that I had. She was totally afraid going on stage. Yeah, it was like when she speaks with people one-on-one, -on -one, sitting at the table, all is fine even if she stands up from the table and has to present in front of the table, still fine. As soon, soon as she had to go on a stage, like having two steps up and people look at her yes. like she was standing above. Um, she was so scared that she forgot her name. It was like brain is blank. And um, okay, we, we saw, okay, there's stress, stress uh, created by speaking in front of people. This was a symptom and also the symptom that she can't remember things, but comes with the stress. This is a normal reaction. But the question was, why it was there this huge amount of stress speaking on a stage? So first what we did, okay, we, we um, looked uh, into uh, um, this lifetime. There have, had been moments when she was uh, a child uh, being on the board uh, in school, uh, doing some calculations 
she wasn't able to do that and, and the other children bullied her. Okay, we removed and cleared that. Then um, we had some uh, issues in the genetic line, uh, the ancestral line that um, there was always like this, I don't want to be seen, uh, no, this kind of fear, okay, what happens? People will judge me, we cleared that. Then we did some kind of behavioral training, how to speak on stage, how to move, um, how to create good uh, storytelling. So it was, it changed, it, it became better, but it was still on a, on a level where I say, There's, there must be something different. And uh, so uh, one day I asked her um, to, uh, yeah, to look into the, the past life. And um, because I, I'm clairvoyant and precognitive, so I can read Akashic records. And um, we opened her Akashic record. And what I uh, saw was this moment, she was standing on a stage, a wooden stage in front of her people, uh, laughing and clapping, shouting, yeah, go on, go on. And the same time she had a rope around her neck. So what happened? She was hanged on that stage ah. and still, this connection of I'm on stage, I will die, stage death. This connection yes. still there as an energetic cord. Yes. And as soon as we clear this situation, cutting the cord of, of the past life, it became better. So this was the source of the problem. And yeah, having this connection, source of the problem, symptoms, you can't even imagine how this comes from, yeah. Yeah, it is very exciting. I mean, um, uh, as a healer, I am usually approached by people who have no um, hope in medicine any longer, you know, because they cannot help, because they cannot treat the illness or because whatever. Because of course, modern medicine only treats the symptom rather than the issue itself, as we know. And um, it's very exciting how we have to really dig into the core of everything and just sort of find the little thing that makes the core a bit sort of shaky as such. It's very interesting and of course, very exciting. Okay, how did you discuss cover that you were a clairvoyant? Hmm. This was when I was eight years old. I had a near-death experience. So um, I was in a children's hospital and it was that I was lying on this doctor's bed and at the same time I was looking on myself. Hmm. So I had this feeling of oh there's this light and uh, it felt so, so free and peaceful. And somehow I was pulled into this light. And at the same time, I could see that my body was lying there. Doctors had to stick in a long needle into my spinal cord to take out some liquid because I was um, in a coma and the doctors didn't know what was happening. So they thought it could be a meningitis and to, to figure out uh, or doing the diagnostic, I had this needle in my spinal cord. And the next moment I was pushed back into my body. I had this, felt this horrible pain of this needle in my co spinal cord, woke up from my own screaming and fell back into coma again. I also could see while I was in this moment uh, being out of my body that my parents were outside. They were not with me in the room. So it was also kind of scary being alone as a little child, eight, eight years old, being only with the doctors there. And from that moment on, it happened again and again that I faded away or that I uh, fell into coma, sometimes for just hours, sometimes for two days. And I had this feeling of, Oh, there's this duality. There's on the one hand my body, and then there is something like me, yeah, like my soul. And um, I, I started to have these special abilities, seeing pitch, pictures and, and getting words that I know other people couldn't see or get. 
And for me, it was totally normal to have that. But for other children, I was kind of weird. And I was always in, in, a, in the library reading a, books about, um, about life to understand what was going on. And um, yeah, so this happened until I was perhaps 18 years old. And only when I studied uh, chemical environmental technology, I figured out that um, in my room where I slept, my sleeping room, my parents painted uh, the wooden ceiling with uh, a color that included pesticides. During that time, it was kind of common that um, yeah, the, the marketing of this uh, company uh, no, was, yeah, protect your, your wooden ceiling, don't have insects, otherwise it will be destroyed. And people were not aware that, uh, yeah, insecticides kill insects, but also have a huge impact on little children as these were neurotoxins. Yeah. So, yeah, and I felt for many, many years how this impacts my, my own, own body, my own life. And so for, for many years, being a young child, um, I had this clairvoyance and pre precognition. But somehow during my life, it disappeared. So perhaps because I didn't want to have it anymore, or I was not uh, really wanting to use it, um, it disappeared. And um, it only came back uh, when um, I was about yeah, 40, 42, 43, uh, when my dog died. She was my soul dog, I and mean, she was with me for 16 years. So we really had a very intense connection, did a lot of sports together, and she was traveling with me. And it was this moment, uh, my brother visited me, we were outside in the garden doing some stuff, and um, I got this picture from her, I have to leave you now. And I told my brother, I have to go inside. Tyra, so her name, um, is, is, is going to die now. And he said, well, how, well, what are you telling me? You know, she, I didn't hear her bark. I didn't hear anything. You know? He said, I have to go inside. And she was lying on the sofa, eyes wide open, and again sent me this picture, I have to leave you now. And 15 minutes later, she died in my arms. And from that moment on, it was like a flash. All my senses were opened and um, I had got all these uh, pictures again from other people, uh, even sometimes having the feelings they do have, uh, having the pain they had, like sometimes it was like, okay, my right knee is hurting. I know that it is not mine, but I know already who has pain in his knee and who am I have to call. And so then I started first to think, okay, I need to call these uh, guys with the tight white jackets because I'm going crazy. And on the other hand, I thought, no, this is something I can remember because I had this before and I now need to understand what is it. And so I learned a lot about, yeah, for example, reading the Akashic records, also participated in remote viewing studies. So now I'm uh, kind of certified woo-woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you know, if, if, if you can do something like that, it was, for example, a study um, from the University of Stanford. They do these studies asking people who have the ability to do remote viewing. Um, uh, to, they, they, they sent me a kind of uh, a code. I don't know anything about this code, just having uh, letters and numbers. And the question with this code was, tell me, um, what do you see? A person is sitting somewhere that is connected with this code. What is the surrounding of the area where he was sitting? 20 minutes to uh, connect with this person and to get the, the pictures. And then uh, I had to write down what I was seeing, send it to uh, the study team. And then I got four different videos, short videos, and I had to bring them in an order, like saying, okay, this is a, the place I've seen. And this is nothing, has nothing to do with this place. So by chance, it is 25% that you're correct. So this was the first thing, okay, it was the right order. And then I got the feedback that describing uh, the, the environment was the most precise I ever had in the study, which means 
that I <laughs> didn't only see the, the place where this guy was sitting on a bench on a hill, but I also could like zoom around and could see something that is behind him, like a ruin with a rusty fence. And so it was like, okay, now it's, if you have a drone, it, for me, it is like something having a drone, you can go up and back and forth and zoom in. And th this is what I did. So now, uh, as I told you, I'm, I, I got this information. So I know that I'm, I'm crazy, but it, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So you are a certified crazy person. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know the feeling. I know the feeling, exactly. Yeah. It's very interesting. I mean, uh, I have many similarities to yours. I had a meningitis when I was five. <laughs> and I just recognized it from the spine and, you know, they're taking the liquid out and whatever it was. And they thought I would die. So, yeah, it's excellent <laughs> that we are not dead. <laughs> no, there, there, I, I think that there is, is, a, is a purpose that, uh, okay. of course, we have these abilities as you have, have them as well. And that we really need uh, these abilities uh, for yeah, healing people, for creating a better world. And uh, if we would have been that, we couldn't do that. So. But it, it, I think these were like changing points again and again, like uh, yeah, bringing up more abilities, uh, changing the path uh, where we need to go and yeah, bring in experiences we would, wouldn't have if we wouldn't have the situations like being in hospital, no? And perhaps we couldn't understand how it is uh, if other people tell about that, yeah. Do you think that the universe has something to do with it? I mean, we are not talking about religions, obviously, but um, being ill uh, or or uh, or conveying some issues to you or warnings from somewhere. Do you think uh, that is a universe playing with us or? keep helping us or taking us away from a path if it is not the right one? Um, I wouldn't say the universe is playing with us. I would more say that we, we, have, we come here with a, a soul plan, what we have to create on this earth. And therefore we need to have certain experiences. We have to learn things. And if we step out of our soul path, things will happen that will bring us back, bring us with, give us more learnings to, to, to grow and yeah, to uh, expand ourselves as well. So I, I think that there is a kind of, of a plan, especially at this time, because if you see what is going on on earth at this time, and we, we signed in to have this uh, task we do have here, this is really for a lot of people that are healers and, and have this connection to, to humanity and to Gaia. For them, it is, is even more hard than for, I would say, normal people, if, if you like this word. But yeah, if you are an empath and you can really feel the, the uh, collective consciousness at the moment, yeah, then we really have a huge job to do here to bring this to another level if we don't want to destroy everything. Yeah, yeah that, that's absolutely true. Um, it just, you know, I mean, we, you talked about collective consciousness. I think there are many collective consciousness. There are groups, people belonging, are belonging to certain groups by mental and emotional intelligence. I mean, not by by money or class system or whatever it is, you know? So obviously their co uh, collective consciousness is different, different from each other, you know? I mean, the vast majority of people would say our idea of living and being here is make a lot of money. And they think it is enjoyment in life, 
because they can pay for their enjoyment, they think. Yeah. Uh, another uh, group of people would say, okay, I am not going to get into that and that, but I am just going to lead my life as I learned from my parents, let's say, on a traditional way. I am going to have family and children, and I pay attention to that. I cook my dinner, God knows what, yeah? And there are uh, other groups of people. I mean, even in the healing community, there are different groups of people because there are people who are actually um, uh, going to courses, and but staying always on the surface because they don't have the courage to get into the depths of, of this extraordinary knowledge, uh, what is there. And of course, others would get into that, but they would stop, <laughs> you know, as we always do, or most of the time we do when we start up something new. That it is exciting at the beginning, but when it comes a bit sort of deep and uh, mysterious, then we might just want to stop and say, okay, I know enough, now I don't want to do. And of course, there is another group of people who would get into the depths of it. So obviously, I mean, when we are talking about helping, obviously the greatest help would come from the people who are in the depths of everything, even though there are charities and everything, but I mean, they are donating money to somebody who has no idea really how to solve the situation as such. What do you think of that? Um, I think that, of course, yes, there are different uh, lifestyles. Uh, people have different mindset, they have a different culture. And um, they have sometimes a vision of their life, what they want to create, and some, sometimes they don't. For me, I see at the moment that most people react on life. They are not the creators of their own life, which means that, okay, no, because I now I learned this, I'm going to work and I, no, it's like work, uh, sleep, uh, play, or something like that. They, they, they are not really creators of their own life. Yeah. So what I see, some of them have a clear vision and they go for that. These are the people mostly that are awakened and already got an idea that they have a purpose here. And that is not just working, it is something to create, whatever it is. It can be also like uh, creating a family, a community or no. This is not bad, it, it, it must, mustn't be something that is totally huge. But having children and teaching them how to well behave uh, on, on this earth, on this planet, um, this is a great job as well. And others uh, become healers and, and uh, help, um, help uh, other people. So I don't see that it is about um, yeah, this or that, but it is about make sure if you create your own life, if you are clear about what you want to create, or if you just react on what is life presenting you. And for, uh, being still in this COVID situation, uh, most people react on what is life presenting because they get all the rules, all the regulations, they can't go uh, to work anymore, they can't leave the house, they can't go shopping. Uh, it's, it's like the, the life is getting very, very, very small. Yeah, stay at your home, don't move, do not do anything. Perhaps you can work remotely, but uh, isolating people, bringing them in fear, this will create a collective consciousness of, of fear, anxiety, and also like, uh, yeah, not being able to, to uh, think out of the box anymore. And I really think we need the difference right now. We need people that stop this on the one hand because this is not okay what is going to happen at the moment. It's a system of control that is being established. And we need people that think out of the box to create this better perspective and be kind of role models for other 
that it is even now possible and especially now possible to make this huge transformation. So I'm really asking people to, to step into this idea, what is their own vision? And um, as I'm, I'm not sure if I can tell it right now, but uh, I uh, have a free giveaway uh, being a meditation, six steps to create the vision. So um, I would really appreciate uh, to give you this offer and, and understand more about what is your own soul path. Oh, thank you very much. And I am sure everybody will be very happy with that. All these wonderful giveaways. But I don't leave you just yet. <laughs> I am curious. I am curious. <laughs> because I am doing and working on very similar things. So obviously, I want to see uh, your idea on the whole uh, project and the subject as such. Um, we've been talking about uh, the possibility that people can create their own lives. Um, do you think that people can do whatever they want? Or how do they create their own lives? I am only asking you because most people have this idea that creating something means that they have the total freedom of anything they want. And I just want your opinion on that. Um, this is a yes and a no. <laughs> so uh, so um, in, my, in my concept, um, we are here um, as souls living um, in a human body. And with this moment that we incarnated on this planet, we came with a, a soul plan, which means we have a kind of an agreement what we want to create in this lifetime. So even though that we have this soul contract, we can create it in, in different ways. But what I see for my own life is I was in different disciplines, medicine, uh, environmental technology, coaching, healing, uh, spirituality. And in the center is the concept of life. Yeah. So, um, and these were my teachings to bring me to this next step where I'm now. And I don't know if there is uh, really this fixed plan, what I have to do, but I feel that as soon as I'm too far away from what I want to create, the universe is pushing me back. Yeah, something happens that um, I can, for example, uh, get an offer that was totally unexpected uh, being a, a business partner in a project, for example. This comes out of nothing. And it tells me, okay, this is now the next way I have to go. And it also can mean that people get sick, for example. Yeah, they create symptoms. So they get some teachings about their health. They need to figure out more, go deeper in, into themselves. Um, perhaps also understanding what is their true identity. And from there, they can come back into uh, the, the path they have to go. So, um, but normally people can create whatever they want for a time. If they will be successful with that is another question. If they are happy with that is another question. But often these are also experiences they need to have to understand what is a no and what, what is a yes. Yes, actually, it's very exciting what you said, because you just prove that um, yes and no, because obviously, if you leave your path very far out, then the universe would kick you back on your path. So actually, you cannot do what you want, because the universe is there to control you <laughs> in one way or another, you know, um, pretty obviously. I mean, there are many people who want to uh, pursue something they decided to pursue that is so much against of their own path. They always sort of bounce back and they never can get there and they get frustrated and angry and everything. And they said, oh, what a life. I cannot get there where I want to. But obviously they are 
barking up on a wrong tree because <laughs> that's not the path they should follow. So at the end of the road, they cannot do what they want <laughs> because the universe would get in and say, come on, you won't be happy that anyway because it is not your doing, but you should follow something different. I mean, that could be a really interesting idea because I had many clients who um, were actually doing that, you know? I mean, uh, people, when they hear that they can create anything, they get on with it and they say, okay, then I want to create this and that, even if the universe is against it. So but they will, they will figure it out because um, it will only work for some time and mm -hmm. then the situations will happen uh, that what they have created will be destroyed, for example, they get sick or uh, they get invites for something else that is even more interesting. Um, they they have also have the feeling that they're not happy in, in, in their, their life or they, they don't feel that they live in abundance and fulfillment. So there are definitely signs to, to see if someone is on the path or not. And um, so, but still they can create stuff for a certain time. So this is still a kind of yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but on the long term, I, I think that people that are aware uh, uh, need to follow their path. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Have you had any experience in your life when you left your past and you've been sort of taken back? Yeah, it, it was really um, at the end when I uh, left Germany. It was, um, I was very busy. I had my company, I had uh, employees and I, I made a good income. But then it happened that like projects were breaking down. My health was breaking down. And these were really like signs, uh, like something is totally going wrong here. And we're then, okay, my mother died, my dog died. And it was like, okay, I, I really need to change something. And this was a moment when I came here to Madeira in holidays. Really like, I, I need to figure something out. I need my, my space for a moment. And so there have been really massive signs that I was not on the right track anymore. But until then, it was, it was my, my way because I had so much learnings. I, I studied so many different things. All this helps me now to, to have different perspectives on, on, uh, on situations, on topics. And so it was good until then. And then there was this crash and it was clear, okay, now my path will be different. And still I'm... I'm kind of figuring out what I'm doing. Yeah, um, I have really nice projects here at the moment, also creating these healing holidays. I have nice joint venture partners that support these projects. We will create also uh, an academy here and a holistic mm -hmm. clinic. All this is happening. And for me, it feels like, okay, this is at the moment my path. I don't know what it will be in, in five years. It's more like doing the next step, feeling in, okay, feels fine. Doing the next step, still good. So, and when I lose my track, something will happen to, to bring me back. At the moment, I have kind of clarity about where to go and uh, yeah. It's very exciting because I think um, we need um, some kind of learning process before we jump onto the next project, obviously. So we cannot do it beforehand. I mean, we have to have all the knowledge to be able to take on the next step in our way. And probably that's why we hang on to situations uh, for a bit longer than we should to learn. And obviously we cannot uh, stay in one with one project for, a very long time unless we change within this project. I mean, we uh, go forward in this project because we need to learn all the time and we need to take on a higher level of, of knowledge and education. It's fascinating. Uh, 
And how is your Portuguese? <laughs> <laughs> I would say I'm learning, so I can can read. Uh, I can read Portuguese, and uh, I can also uh, understand a lot. But speaking is still not good, so. Um, I have to learn a little bit more. Or oh, I have to overcome this uh, feeling of, okay, it's more easy to speak English uh, than, than Portuguese because most of the people here or my clients uh, or colleagues speak uh, English. So I don't really have the, the pressure to speak Portuguese, even though in one of my projects uh, I'm in here um, having a, a retreat center, creating this retreat center. Uh, my employees are uh, Portuguese, so I, I really need to start speaking Portuguese now, yeah. <laughs> ah, exciting. I lived in Brazil for a couple of years. So I learned Portuguese that I was in love with the language. <laughs> it's so beautiful, it's extraordinary. So thank you very much, my lovely person and my beautiful friend for all the information you gave us. You are extraordinary and you know i am an initiated witch uh, witch so i don't wish you success because we don't do that uh, but i send you all the best energies to push you forward in your path <laughs> thank you very very much yeah uh, see you very soon thank yes, you so thank you so much <laughs> bye bye Bye-bye. Ah.